Dr. Martin Payapilli is trained in neurolinguistic programming, Silva and Alpha mind control methods, family counseling, and hypnotherapy. He received training in therapeutic hypnosis and counseling from the Institute of Clinical Hypnosis and Counseling at Nilambur, Kerala, India. He is a certified consulting hypnotist and a loyal member of the National Guild of Hypnotists Incorporated at Merrick Mack, New Hampshire. He is a well known educationist motivator and counsellor. He is a much sought after resource person and has received several awards. I take immense pleasure to welcome you all to this seminar. I am really excited to talk to you a group of young, energetic, enthusiastic students and I believe that you are meant to do some spectacular things for this world. You are special, unique and precious. Since the beginning of time, there has never been another girl exactly like you, another boy exactly like you. You are uncommonly great. Let's talk something about your human automation. Your human automation would put every machine in the world to shame. The most elaborate machine functioning perfectly most of the time is at your command. You have a wonderful brain, you are brainy, the product of a billion years of evolution. It is the finest precision machine in existence. The power of your brain and body together allows your heart to beat one lakh times a day without conscious thought. So, I humbly want to give you a simple message. You can achieve anything. You can achieve anything if you want to. You need to achieve something great and contribute something to your society, to your state, to your country and to the world. Nothing was ever in any man that's not in you. If anyone can do anything in this world, you too can. First thing you must do is concentrate a single area. Concentrate a single area and go behind it even if it takes the remainder of your life. I remember one of my favorite stories told by the Chinese sage Chuangsu. Once there lived a, a great sword crafter who was 90 years old. He was the sword crafter of a king. Even at the age of 90, his work was carried out with exceptional precision and ability. And one day, the king asked him, Do you have any special technique or magical power to create these marvelous swords? He said, No special technique, no magical power. I concentrated a single area. I started forging swords when I was 20 years old. After that, I never paid attention to any other thing. I did not care about anything else. I paid attention if it was a sword. It became my passion. I took all my energy and I put it in one direction, making swords, making swords. And it became my passion, my life, my breath, my obsession, my magnificent obsession. And that is the secret to my mastery. If you want to become a scientist, concentrate that single area. If you want to become a doctor, engineer, pilot, concentrate that single area. Do you have a dream? What's your dream? My ambition is to become a college lecturer. Okay. So, what's your dream? My ambition is to become an actress. Actress? Yes. And your dream? To become a doctor. Doctor. Yes. Plus, throw away your old habits if they are not productive. Throw away your laziness, your procrastination. Throw away your overuse of cell phones and internet. You know, a snake cannot grow unless its old skin is cast off. You check, analyze, examine your habits. Your habits give you success, not your heredity. So, cultivate good habits and be addicted to it. You can cultivate the habit of reading books Cultivate good habits and be addicted to it. Cell phones tell you, bend your head and read me. I will never allow your head to raise again. But books tell you, bend your head and read me. I will never allow your head to bend in front of anybody. See this collector, Govind Jaiswal. His father was a humble rich puller. He joined a public library when he was studying in UP school 
and by simply reading he became a collector and uh, change your words in psychology there is a technique talk to yourself because your words have power in your body japanese scientist masoro imoto conducted a test to know the power of words he took some water and uh, he said some negative words to it and kept it in the freezer and again he took some water and he blessed it with some positive words and he kept it in the freezer and the next day he checked it and uh, he found uh, the water crystals formed from the negative words were unformed and uh, incoherent but from the positive words were beautiful and perfectly formed masoro imoto says that 70% of the human body is made of water talk to yourself whenever you are disturbed distressed dejected always talk to positively talk to yourself positively if you want to achieve something great something uncommonly great something special you need to change your thoughts change your thoughts and change your destiny change your thoughts and change your lives 5000 years ago in vedas it is written tadastu it's a sanskrit word it's our indian blessing that means so astu means be it or happen let it be so as you wish or as you hope so what you are thinking is very important thing what you are thinking where do you find yourself after 5 or 10 years what exactly do you want to do in your life what you are thinking if you think always that you are successful you will be successful and buddha said the same thing 2500 years ago you are the results of your thoughts you are the results of your thoughts they were tribes living in a far off jungle and the peculiar thing about them was uh, they used crutches for walking they never used their legs for walking one day an explorer happened to see them and he was really surprised he asked them why do you use crutches for walking why can't you use your legs they said crutches are meant for walking one day he summoned the entire community in the main square and he gave a, a demonstration he said i will teach you how to walk and i will teach you how to throw away your crutches and he said it's very easy to walk first thing you need to put your entire weight on one leg first and shift the weight to the other leg is very simple and throw away your crutches and they were really thrilled to walk and they tried and while they were trying the entire community fell down flat on the floor with great difficulty they picked up their crutches and uh, walked back home while they were going back the leader of the community came and said now do you understand crutches are meant for walking not legs is very difficult to throw away your age old beliefs it needs to chipping away slowly perhaps the explorer should have worked slowly in strengthening their unused legs your thoughts become things your thoughts become your beliefs anton chekhov said a man is what he believes jesus christ said as a man thinketh in his heart so is he on the border of kashmir in pakistan there is a tribe called hunsa the speciality was uh, they live up to 100 years 120 150 is also possible for them but since they have come in contact with the outsiders they started dying earlier just because they came to know that the outsiders die earlier and the interesting thing is the food remains the same the climate remains the same law of attraction says whatever you think again and again you will attract it you have learned the uh, law of gravity law of relativity but i think you have uh, never learned the uh, law of attraction and these laws are so precise exact we can send people to the moon and we can time the landing with the precision a fraction of a second so your thoughts have a frequency and it has power in your life now let's learn a wonderful technique sq3r method 
when I conduct a teacher's orientation program or successful parenting, I have often been asked by the teachers and parents, is there any method to study? Is there any method to read and understand easily? There is a method. That method is called SQ3R method. And this is by prominent American educational psychologist Francis Pleasant Robinson in his book Effective Study, which was published in 1946, introduced it. A wonderful technique. SQ3R method. Yes stands for survey. Normally we take the book and start reading. Here you do not read. You simply survey or skim the pages and understand the ideas, headings, subheadings and outstanding features. Q for question. Make questions from what you have surveyed and convert headings and subheadings into questions and look for answers. This is question. R1 stands for read. Now we have surveyed and created questions. Now you start reading seriously. Read seriously and look for the answers. This is R1. R2 is recite. Recite whatever you have learned, especially major points and keywords. When you recite, you will be able to reproduce in your examination hall. R3 is for review. Review whenever you get time. You test yourselves in case certain keywords have been forgotten. A quick review will bring them back into your memory. This is yes q 3 r method. Yes for survey. Q for question. R1 read. R2 recite. R3 review. Now let me tell you how to do smart work. How to use effective methods. Number one, find out your concentration time. Some students have a good concentration in the morning and some in the evening. Find out your concentration time and study difficult subjects or the most challenging subjects there. And one more thing, you need to find out which subject do you need to work more and work. Number two, manage your time judiciously. Have a realistic timetable. More than any other practice in your life, your ability to manage your time will give you success. You study one to two hours in the morning and three to four hours in the evening. Work and work. Number three, take notes legibly. When you study, have a pen and a rough book with you and take notes legibly. Do not scribble. If you write neatly, you can refer to it later. Number four, learn like a teacher and teach whatever you have learned. Learn new information with the expectation of having to teach it to someone else. Learn like a teacher and teach your friends, teach your parents. Then you will have a, a better memory. Number five, answer previous question papers. If you answer previous question papers, you will have no exam fear. You will be able to know where you are. Number six, prepare holiday timetable. If you get Saturday and Sunday, prepare a special timetable for it. Do not sit with a text from morning to evening. In the morning, you learn one subject. And in the afternoon, another one. And in the evening, another one. Brain experts say that the same subject will make you feel bored and it will make your mind dull. If you study different subjects, you will have a tendency to complete it fast and learn faster. Number seven. Write exam before exam comes. You take a question paper and write an exam very seriously for three hours. When you write exam, you will be able to know your standard. Take study breaks. It enhances overall productivity. Study for 40 or 45 minutes and take a break for 5 or 10 minutes. That time you do not use your mobile or computer, it will prevent your mind from fully relaxing. Number eight, do exercise daily. It's a must. Exercise is the miracle drug. It changes your blood chemistry. When you do exercise, your brain releases important hormone like 
serotonin, dopamine, and uh, norepinephrine. Serotonin is the mood booster, and dopamine is for learning and uh, attention. And norepinephrine is for bringing awareness and attention and concentration. So do exercise daily. It will improve your brain function, your mood, and it reduces the occurrence of depression and it reduces stress. So try walking or swimming, cycling for 30 minutes daily. Number nine, sleep six or seven hours daily. Deep sleep causes physical changes in the brain. When you learn something, when you learn new something, your brain cells grow new connections that reach out and connect to other brain cells. This strengthens the pathways in your brain around whatever it is you learn. So sleep six or seven hours daily. Number 10, drink at least eight glasses of water a day. Studies shows that up to 70% people are in the state of dehydration. It is very bad for your brain and exams too. So wherever you go, carry a water bottle with you and drink water before you start to feel thirsty. And if you are in the examination hall, drink water in every 40 minutes. It will refresh your mind. Number 11. Eat well. Eat fresh fruits, vegetables, carbohydrates and proteins. Eat breakfast daily. Do not avoid your breakfast. It will deprive your brain of vital nutrients. Have a balanced meal. If you are a non-vegetarian, eat chicken and eggs. If you are a vegetarian, take omega-3 fatty acids. These are critical for brain function. Number 12. Seek help from your parents and teachers, not from your friends. If you have any problem, you talk to your parents daily and talk to your teachers and select one of your teachers as your mentor. Share your fear with them. Share whatever problems you have because a teacher is a guru, one who dispels darkness. Now, let us meditate for some time. Research shows that people spend 47% of their waking hours thinking about something other than what they are doing. We are always thinking, thinking continuously, constantly. So we are disturbed, distressed. So in order to stop your thoughts, you need to meditate daily. Now close your eyes, sit upright. Give full focus on your breath, your inhalation and uh, exhalation. Observe your in-breath and out-breath. Slowly, slowly count your each exhalation. Now, slowly, slowly open your eyes. Meditation can reprogram the brain and rewire the brain to be more rational and less emotional. So do meditation daily. You will improve your concentration and your memory power and your life. When I see you students or children, I am very happy to talk to you. You know why? because you are very happy. Are you happy? All of you? You are young, energetic and enthusiastic and you are something special and unique and precious. There is something great inside you. You need to find it out. Something great. There is a miracle working power inside you. There is a gold mine inside you. If you think that you are ordinary, you will be ordinary. If you think that you are extraordinary human being, you will become extraordinary human being. So what do you think is very important thing in your life? 
what do you think about yourself my dear students psychologist say man is nothing but the result of his biological psychological and uh, sociological conditions or the product of his heredity and uh, environment but dr victor frankel an expert in neurology and psychiatry a survivor of four concentration camp says he is capable of defying and braving even the worst conditions conceivable he says man is not fully conditioned he is ultimately self determining he has the capacity to rise above any conditions as gandhi ji said you can shake the world gently i remember the story of uh, pablo picasso who was a great painter spanish painter one day a young lady approached the picasso and said uh, mr picasso i am your fan uh, could you please draw something for me he took a piece of paper and drew something very fast and uh, handed over it to her she said uh, mr picasso this is wonderful marvelous beautiful excellent masterpiece i will remember you whenever i see this picture and she was going back with that picture picasso said uh, lady you stop there you come back and pay me million dollars and go this is not free and she was surprised she said uh, mr picasso you took only 30 seconds to do it and you are asking me million dollars how come how is that picasso said lady i took only 30 seconds now but i took 30 years to learn to do it in 30 seconds the message of the story is very simple you won't get anything free in your life you will not get anything free in your life there is no shortcut to success there is no magical wand for success if you want to achieve something great you need to do something daily continuously constantly relentlessly and passionately you go and check the history of the world you will find extraordinary achievements and just behind that you will find extraordinary efforts so you need to do work you work and work and work and last but the most important thing in your life a human being is measured not by your position not by your bank balance or not by your house or your car a human being is measured what fragrance he has left here what you are sharing what you are giving a life is giving become a perfect human being that's our aim nowadays we are digital being you should have an aim to become a perfect human being and care helpless people you cannot change the world but you can change the world of one person thank you thank you very much